Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Skip and welcome to another video. Before I get on with this video part, I just want to thank all of you subscribers, all the new people that have joined me. Uh, as always, thank you to all of you people that have been there uh, since the beginning, but over 525 as of now as I'm speaking, which is amazing. Thank you very much. Um, if you've not subscribed to my channel and you're watching this, because it would appear that 92% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribers. If only 5 or 10% of you could subscribe, that'd be brilliant. Um, and see if we can get towards that magic 600, which would be really, really excellent. Thank you very much. Welcome, this is part three of the SC5 Grillo's RC conversion. Uh, originally, I was going to build the fuselage first, but when I was looking at how I'd mount the motor, I realised that um, because I'm using the radial brushless motor and this isn't a radial engine model, um, it wasn't going to fit neatly and I was worried I was going to have to cut the plastic cowling that comes with the kit. Um, so when I was looking at it on the plan, I was trying to work out how can I use the motor uh, without cutting the plastic. So I thought, well, actually, looking at the um, shaft of the motor, if I could find something that could extend that and then I could fit the prop onto it, it might be long enough to go through from the inside of the fuselage out through the plastic can um, cowling uh, and then look a lot neater, a bit more scale-like. Um, so I did a little bit of research online and managed to find these aluminium collars that extend, um, well, they can be used for joining threads or not. So measuring and checking on the brushless motor, found out that it was an M5 thread. Found the M5 uh, extension collar. I went for 15 mil long, um, which looked about right. Uh, and as you can see, when I put it onto the plan, onto the brushless motor, it fits really nicely. I then thought, how do I now attach the prop to the brushless motor? So I found that in, my, in the garage, I've got spare uh, nylon M5 bolts that I've used for joining wings to fuselage before. So by taking this, threading it into the collar once it was on the brushless motor, um, putting the prop on so I could measure it, putting the nut on, uh, and then trimming the uh, nylon bolt, it all seems to look really nice and neat. So I'm a lot more positive that actually I can now use the brushless motor set inside the fuselage, uh, and then with the aluminium collar, it will be able to come through the plastic cowl uh, and look a lot more scale. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So that's what those photos I've just been putting up as I've talked uh, show you. Fuselage build is going well. Um, the laser cut parts are excellent. They just pop out, then just give them a quick sand down. Um, building over the plan, just building it as per. Uh, that's what these few photos are going to show you now. What you'll notice, I haven't fitted in B1 because I want to be able to put the motor in first. Uh, I've trimmed B4 and B6 so that I can create the hatch as per this diagram. Uh, what I also did for a top tip is once I want to put the centre piece in, um, just sand it down. So sanded both sides just to make it a little bit thinner so that it fits in nice and neat. And um, just be careful not to snap it like I did with this one. Fortunately, a bit of CA glue and it fits in really nicely. So all going well. These are the parts I've off-cut for B4 and B6 from the, both the left and the right-hand side. I've labelled them accordingly. What I now need to do is create another B3 and a B7 just for the top halves um, so that I can create the battery hatch. And obviously I'll cut this off the main spar uh, once I've put it in. Um, I would normally try and put the battery hatch on this main beam because it's wider. But because of the height and the fact that the um, cabane struts fit in, between here and that stringer. I'm going to have to fit the stringer in first and build the battery hatch on top. The fuselage has come together well. Um, it's pretty even and actually this time I seem to have got a good parallel or aligned formers which is nice. Um, I've put in the stringers as you can see here where I'm going to build the battery hatch on top of. So what I now need to do is remove this piece, create the new um, formers and then build the hatch that will go on top of that stringer there. Uh, and obviously what I'll be doing is then putting in the L pieces here which will take up the wing cabanes or struts so yeah, so far so good. If 
right that's the components made um, for the battery hatch which is going to fit onto there um, in hindsight I shouldn't have cut the spar out there it'd be easier to attach these um, extra ribs or former sorry to the hatch uh, and then saw it off afterwards um, but I am where I am and what I'm going to do now is using some greaseproof paper paper sorry pin these two parts onto the hatch then I'm going to glue the formers to each other across the hatch and then insert the centerpiece well that's the plan uh, once I get going I'll decide it doesn't take long to put together when you've got a bit of CA glue and you've already got the parts prepped um, so that's the hatch outline belt what I'm now going to do is remove it from the fuselage uh, add the stringers then I'm going to see how strong it feels because obviously I'm going to be lifting it on and off hopefully quite a bit um, I will attach it with a couple of small magnets and a couple of little cocktail sticks probably in the places where the pins are now magnets at the front because that's where the wind's going to come from and then the cocktail sticks at the rear just to hold it in place um, but once the stringers are in I might actually just add a few little fillets whatever the word is just to strengthen where the formers join because obviously they're not as strong as they would have been if they were going all the way through the fuselage but it's pretty well lined up looks all right so now oh that's company so now i finish building the hatch okay battery hatch complete got the cocktail sticks to hold it in at the rear and then at the front just zoom in here you can see rare earth magnets let me hold it upside down and focus doesn't come off however when you want to lift it off again one-handed it's not too difficult you slide it in drop it on and it clicks in place nice and neat I think the more I do of these the easier they're becoming and the neater they're becoming quite pleased with the lines on that as well um, what I now need to do is remove that and then make the formers inside wider so trim them down so that the battery and the electronics fits in a lot easier as you can see using the dremel i've thinned out the formers or made more space same on the hatch so it just gives a little bit more space when i want to put the battery and the electronics in uh, that looks good i don't think i'm going to bother strengthening this it seems to be fine actually taking it in and out the magnets aren't overly strong which is good I think using the two smaller ones this time has helped so what I now need to do is look at creating the motor mount for the motor mount I'm just going to use the provided uh, vinyl piece um, where I need to mount the motor I've used the four holes from the Cox motor template worked out the center made a bigger hole that will allow for that screw there then using the wider space screws drilled two more little holes which I'll then bolt it onto cut a slot for the wire to go through into the fuselage for the SC slot at the bottom here is so that it slots on so I can then slide it into place and glue it um, I'll then fit front former on with the cow support and then when I put the cowling on along with the aluminium adapter it should all fit nice and neatly the motor is now mounted securely in place and fixed uh, the advantage of positioning it here is I can actually reach those bolts that hold the motor on uh, through the battery hatch should I need to not that I can show you easily but I can get there when I, with the extended allen key so it all fits nice and neat that all then comes through with the wiring so I'm going to hopefully get the ESC to fit in this compartment here then it's just the battery receiver I'll put the two rear servos here and then the wire from the wing ailerons will come up here so all good so now what I need to do is fit on the former B1 into place use the cow supports and having had a quick check it should then all fit nicely with engine cowling um, but I think what I probably need to do before I do that is actually put on the brass sleeve so the aluminium sleeve with prop adapter so that I can then put the prop on later but one thing I should mention is um, before you glue the motor mount onto 
the model it's probably worth just checking that the motor spins freely um, the first time I tried it the bolts were slightly too long so they were rubbing on the inside um, you can't see it from outside of the thing but when the motor was turning it was jittering so I put the shorter bolts in and it runs nice and smoothly now so just something to bear in mind so that I can work out the best place for the rudder and elevator servos uh, within the fuselage here decided I'm going to make the um, stabiliser and thin as well what I've done is I've photocopied the plan cut them out and stuck them onto the sheet bolsa which fits neatly into the gap there mainly to sand it down a little bit just to make sure it smooths in um, so yes it is one solid piece but when I think about the extra weight that I've put in the front already I don't think the weight of the bolsa is going to make too much difference but what I will do is I will cut some holes within the surfaces just to lighten it a little bit um, but I really don't think it's going to make much difference on the other models that I've made it hasn't made any difference at all because obviously with the weight of the batch and everything else it's quite significant from the original model design so I'll cut these out and uh, see how they look OK, what we have here now is the uh, rudder uh, and the tail beam, it's, or plane even, it's all been rounded off, uh, ready to go. I've inserted the metal rod so that it keeps the elevator joined up, that's also been rounded off. Uh, and what I've done here with the um, stabiliser is I've sanded lightly in the middle so that it fits really neatly now inside the fuselage piece there, just slots in, I've obviously marked it up. What I need to do to finish these pieces off is cover them in tissue um, ready and then I can insert them into the fuselage and then I can work out exactly where the servos and push rods are going to go to meet the rudder and the elevators. Something I've just noticed which I didn't realise a small piece of boss would make a difference of. You can see with the stabiliser inserted actually the model sits nice and level. Um, if I pause the video, remove the stabiliser, I'll show you what happens when it's not in there. I'll be honest that surprises me the fact that it has such a big difference um, but obviously it's the whole lever piece so if I just pop that on there and let go you can see it's holding it down so even though I thought a small piece of bolts wouldn't make much difference it clearly does and yet I've got to add those two bits and that bit on yet so I'm hoping with the battery um, pushed forward the prop and all the other bits on obviously the wings will be there It'll balance off quite nicely but yeah, just that one piece makes a big difference. Tail pieces are pretty much finished. I've covered them in tissue uh, and I've also connected the hinges so that all works nicely, you can see. I haven't actually permanently fixed the rudder in yet because I want to make sure that I can get it into the tail piece at the end. But that does this does slide into the fuselage. It's all covered in tissue. I've shrunk it down, did the same process as I did on the wings so doped the edges first um, and now I just need to work out exactly where I'm going to put the servos in the fuselage to then connect up with the tail pieces. I apologise, I realise there's a bit of a jump from my last video clip and photos uh, to where I am right at this moment in time but just to do a catch up what I did first was mounted the two servos for the rudder and elevator uh, onto balsa They've been glued in place like I've done previously and also a little bit of extra bolts in there to secure them. Um, before I did glue them in place I made sure obviously that the arms were centred um, and I drilled out the holes for the push rod clamp. Uh, what I then have been trying to do which is why I got a bit distracted is work out where the push rod goes through the fuselage so you can see the holes there. There are three because I had three attempts before I could get the right flow there inside here and then I was trying to work out where they pop out at the back of the fuselage. Um, I finally, well I think I've managed to do that now. Um, so what I then thought, right I need to, so that I can get them in place I need to cover the rear end with tissue so that I can then put the stabiliser and rudder uh, on the fuselage and then I can connect up the push rods make sure they all works properly uh, and then I can finish building the, well, installing the rest of the stringers um, so what I've had to do so that I know where the push rods go is put in some of the stringers on the bottom 
they're obviously not complete because I need to get access with my fingers onto the formers to put the, the wire into the servos um, but I did do the top stringers so that's come out quite neatly what I'm also probably going to do on the bit here under the stabiliser is put another thin or another stringer underneath so that when the tissue paper goes over it I can then slit the tissue paper um, oh, excuse me for then sliding in the stabiliser um, obviously if I don't have another stringer under here then the tissue paper will just sag so what I now need to do is just put another stringer there um, to make sure that the stabiliser is nice and level and when I put the tissue over it it doesn't just sag talking of adding the stringer in what I've had to do what I'm thinking of doing is I've put this greaseproof paper uh, on the stabiliser so that I can glue the stringer up tight against it uh, and obviously it won't then stick to the stabiliser because I want to be able to take the stabiliser out um, just so that I can make sure everything's working before I then finally glue it in place so a bit of greaseproof paper so that I can glue the stringer in on both sides so it's nice and snug up against the stabiliser Stringers in place didn't stick to the stabiliser, just to the paper, but I can cut that or tear it off so that's no drama. So I just trim this down and then I'm going to just cover this rear section in tissue paper uh, and leave it till tomorrow so that I can then install the rudder and stabiliser. The tissue is all nice and secure, shrunk down with water, dope applied to seal the paper on to the bolster. Uh, so now I'm going to slit here to insert the stabiliser and then go through the uh, tricky part of them feeding the wire through into the holes all the way through and then connecting up to the servo arms. Stabiliser and rudder uh, glued in position, slit the paper, slid the stabiliser into place, measured from the end or from where, let me show you measured from here to this bar here and then that way to that one to make sure they were the same so about 19 centimeters uh, then I glued it in place along the seams uh, I then installed the rudder uh, did a bit of extra glue along the seam on both sides and I've glued it into position cut it out nicely so now um, give that a few more minutes then I'm going to try and put the hole in the right place in the paper at the back here to then thread the wires I did actually get my hand stuck on the paper there, um, pulled a bit of the tissue off, but the advantage of this at this stage, you can just patch it up. Okay, that's the control horns and push rods connected for the elevator and rudder. If I said that was easy, I'd be lying. That's probably taking me a good 20 minutes. Uh, and I had to cut the paper so I could actually find the holes, um, but it all seems to move freely at the moment, which is good. Um, as I said earlier, at least with tissue paper, you can uh, tidy it up and patch it up. So that's what I'll do. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do just to make sure that everything is good to go before I fit them in place is connect the power up and make sure that the servos are centered. Then I'll screw the rods in tight so that these are nice and level. But so far, so good. Push rods are now secured in place with the screws. Everything seems to be working there, so just see if the rudder moves. Loads of throw, so I need to limit that. And then the elevator. Yeah. Great, and they are. And everything seems to have stayed secure, my homemade control horns are all there still. Great. I've patched the holes, uh, I've secured the keel, the rear keel on underneath and unlike the model I've actually added a bit of wire as well because um, I'm hoping this will fly more than once and hopefully off tarmac in which case I want that to be a little bit more robust so I figure I put a piece of wire on there That'll just be stronger than bare balsa. So that's the tail section done. So now I'll go ahead and finish off building the fuselage. Okay, so all the stringers have been put in place. Um, 
as per the plan. That's the only guide you get really. There's nothing on the overview for what the strings look like on top or underneath. So there's a bit of uh, sort of educated guesswork, uh, such as L3 where they were supposed to go exactly. So I had to use the instructions because um, I could see it on the plan there, but I couldn't really work out what it was. So looking at the picture in the instructions, it showed me that it's in that place. And obviously that's what the undercarriage will fit into. Now I worked out with the um, string is and I can fit the ESC and motor up front. Servos are all nice and secure. Sanded it all down. So I just need to make sure now that the wing fits in neatly, the lowering that is. Uh, I also need to put in the headrest, the bit goes on here, and also put in the um, canopy section, which is card, but I'll probably use the foam. Um, and then I just need to fit in the receiver, which hopefully will fit in this section here. And then the battery will fit there. The only thing that I'm slightly concerned of is once the top wing's on, how I actually get the battery in. Um, so obviously it's going to fit in there. So I'm going to have to slide the battery in that way. So it's working out, is that the best place for the ESC? Bearing in mind, that's the battery lead. I want to have it lying flat and just put it all loose inside. Uh, not quite sure yet. I guess it's one of those things that until I've put the wing on or the wings on, I'm not really going to know. Um, but yeah, that's the fuselage built. To paper the fuselage, I'm going to start from the rear and work my way to the front. I'm going to do the underside first then the sides, then the top, that way everything overlaps. Uh, so the airflow is then going across and keeping all the paper pushed down, not any chance of lifting it up. Obviously what I'll do, as I did with the wings, is once it's all done, I'll then seal the joins with um, the pure dope and then spray it. Okay, as you can see, I've completely covered the fuselage and uh, battery hatch now. Um, I just need to go over all the seals with some neat dope just to make sure it's all secured down and tidy the edges up. Uh, and then that's complete. So hopefully you found this video useful. Um, obviously I still need to um, seal it properly. Same with the wings. I need to create the undercarriage. I um, also need to work out about sticking the wings together. I'll need to cut the holes where the cabane and the struts go. Um, but I'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.